Hi there everybody. Welcome again to one of our videos. Today I'm going to run through Multigo which is a product of Perturva. Down below in the description you'll find a link to Perturva and their various products. In this video we're going to use Multigo in analyzing a fraud scenario and then simulate the application of OSINT to it to identify the responsible parties of the fraud. As part of the investigation, the client hands us a spreadsheet from Excel with a number of transactions. I think it was close to a thousand. We need to clean this data up uh, to pull it into Multigo for Multigo to analyze it better. So what we do is we take the client uh, account number, the account that was debited through these transactions, and then just fill it into fill the complete column in Excel. With that done, we take it into Multigo. Open up Multigo, import the file, set up the file, select the file, and then choose sequential. We need to sequence these transactions. We select all the items from the file with shift left click and then unmap them. Now we map the account number of the client to bank account. Then we go to the column of the entity that was paid, either a company or a person. And because it's either a company or a person, we use the phrase entity in Multigo um, because it's easier to, to reference it. And also you can use the phrase entity to search at a later stage. So phrase is selected. And then we go and select the account numbers. You can also bring in the amounts if you like, um, if it's relevant to the investigation. Now we check our sequencing. So we've got the client's account, the phrase of the entity, and the account. And then it's important here to ensure that the checkbox for blank spaces is checked. You don't want to import a whole bunch of blank spaces into your graph. Just clutter it up with unnecessary information. You can also import it into case file, which is a free piece of software, which can also do visualization. So you select, from licenses, you select the version of Multigo you want to use. In this case, it's case file. You just press run and the file will be imported into case file. Multigo formulates the graph into a circular graph, which is not ideal for our purposes. So we use the block graph. This gives us a better presentation of the data. We start having a look at the data. Here we've got two companies pay, paying into one account. We've got another company into two accounts, an employee into two accounts. Subsequently, it was shown that he changed his bank account during his employment and then we've got some companies with phonetic names all paying into one account it was later shown this was an error and then we've got the Social Security Commission which is two accounts one for training one for unemployment and then we get to a set of companies that have their own accounts but also paying into another account straight away sets up some red flags. We also got an employee who appears to be linked to this account and no other accounts. Her name is Susan Smith. Susan Smith is also the bookkeeper for the company responsible for making payments to both employees as well as suppliers of the co client company. The nice advantage of Multigo, any singular payments as in this case are made, Multigo will separate these out and give them each their own account and description. So you can double check these by ungrouping them from the group block. And you'll see that it's just a company and an account number. And generally these are, in this, or again, in these type of investigations, these are pretty safe. And one can even, if they're not relevant to the investigation, you can even delete them out of the graph. All right, the focus of this investigation is this one particular account and Susan Smith. Through some speedy police work, the client obtains, legally that is, a copy of Susan Smith's bank account. It's in a slightly different format to the previous one, which we're also going to import into Multigo. 
So we go through the same cycle of events, import from table, graph from table, select the correct table or the Excel spreadsheet, sequential again, select all the columns, unmap them, and now we start to map the columns that we want to import into Multigo. To link it properly, we select Susan Smith's bank account. And then we go to, there's a credit column for amounts or credit amounts. We select that because that will link to the account. So we go down to money, references money. Then we go to description because this will be the name of the account of outgoing payments. And again we use the phrase function. And then we go to account number. Again, this is the crediting account or vice versa from a debit from this account. And then we select the debited amount that the receiving account will be receiving. Select money. And then we have it. This is our sequencing. It's not correct. So we need to change it. We delete the arrows between the various entities and replace those with the correct ones. Pull that to the debit amount, a credit amount, to the description, to the account that will be paid into, and then the amount that will be paid to. Again, check that the checkbox is filled in for blank spaces. And then it's imported into Multigo. It's a smaller graph, obviously, less transactions. We can just check through the Imported data looks correct, so it's good enough to use. Now we save our graph because we're going to do some manipulation with the data. Done. So we've got our new graph. We highlight it all, copy it as a graph. And we take it back to our original graph to see if there are any commonalities between the two. We've obviously got our employee Susan Smith, which is fine. That uses it as a reference account. And then we've got another account which um, also links to an account being paid from Susan Smith's account. Which is linked to this cool text company and a Fiona Johnson. We go back to our spreadsheets. This confirms the cool text payments and the manpower payments. Go to the original client statement. We've got Fiona Johnson, who on further investigation has proven to be a ghost employee. And back into Multigo. And we start getting rid of all the irrelevant information as I mentioned earlier to bring the graph down to a more manageable sort of size that it's easier to analyze and presents a better picture at the end of the day. Block it, looks nice and tidy and we seem to know where we're going with this thing. But now we must start identifying some of these entities to start making sense of all this information. We've got Fiona Johnson, we've got Cooltex and we've got Manpower. For this particular case, we're just going to focus on cool text. Select it, copy it, open a new graph, and paste it. Linked to this, we have a Google custom search engine, which we developed before doing this exercise. So in Multigo, we make use of the Google custom search transform. Link, link to this is Facebook. So it searches only Facebook. And then searching cool text brings back a company if it's present on the in or in particular Facebook will bring back a result in Facebook. Then we select just the facebook.com result and we pull all URLs from this page to see if we discover a company by the name of cool text. So 
So it brings back a Facebook page of Cool Tech Solutions. You can use the Google Me function, but I would advise using the URL selection. Select that and then open a web browser and paste it into the URL there. So it brings back a Facebook page with very little detail. So we've got to resort to a credit report in any event. So we pull one from LexisNexis. We see that the company is registered. Just by the way, these reports are LexisNexis's own um, sample reports. So there's no confidential or public information contained in these reports. Anyway, if we're analyzing the company, we can see it's got a few debt problems. So it could have some money issues. It's got a lot of inquiries. We'll do a separate video on credit reports, inquiries. It's very strong metadata. That's one of the most underutilized forms of information. But what we want to find out here is who are the directors of this company. When we find our directors, there's three of them, Raven McIntosh, John Smith, and Alice Cooper. After further analysis, we identify Alice Cooper as a suspect. And in Multigo, we do the Google search engine search as we did before against Facebook. Facebook brings back some results for us. Once again, we use the facebook.com page and we pull the URLs from that page. Facebook returns results. They're all grouped together. We ungroup them to get to the bottom line URLs and we start to analyze them. Searching social media, particularly Facebook with Multigo and the Google search engine is a very powerful technique. One gets some, can get some good results. In any event, in this case, we've identified Alice Cooper Smith. We select the URL from the detailed view on the side, copy the URL into a browser. Here we have the profile of Ellis Cooper Smith. How do you guys know, and this is real, how do you know that this profile is false? Email us. So we extract the entities back from the profile in Multigo. It will bring back various items. So picture from her profile. She used to work at McDonald's. It'll bring back the McDonald's or supposedly. And then all the superfluous information that you don't require, you can select and delete as necessary. Back to her profile. Let's get a hold of the friends here. We scrape these. We're going to import them into Multigo because we want to find out if there's any link back to Susan Smith this way, potentially. Once you've scrapped all the friend URLs, paste them into Multigo, link them to her main profile, It'll give us a nice demographic. Now we need to start analyzing these URLs to see if there's anything that is useful. Now we pull down all the entities attached to these URLs to find any relevant information that can assist us in this investigation. Multigo takes a bit of time as it runs, runs through all the profiles. The, the nice advantage is you can run them all at once. In the interim, we've pulled a credit report for Alice Cooper and we see there's a, an address for Johannesburg in South Africa. And we go through the report, we can see she's got a few money issues in her life handed over. There was some court action, she's absconded. So yeah, she doesn't have the most cleanest record around. But what is important is that we found an address for her as Johannesburg, South Africa. So Multigo will continue running back, bringing back all the entities. We can start analyzing our data until we see, spot something that is familiar to us. And we see University of Johannesburg, hometown Johannesburg, who could this be? 
we go up remember this came from a friend list and we select the URL for the Facebook the profile opens up on Susan Smith who resides in Johannesburg Alice Cooper resides in Johannesburg our client has their business in Johannesburg and the fraudulent transactions took place in Johannesburg South Africa this is a brief example as to how OSINT can assist in a criminal investigation such as this thank you for watching and once again if you have any comments questions statements please don't hesitate to contact us